Good evening viewers, it's time for a subscriber spotlight, uh, this time featuring Slardy Bartfart. He's platooned with Heister and I want to say Marathon? Uh, probably mess that up, but uh, anyways. Uh, so Slardy is playing the T-71, it's fiery salient tier 10 game, and what you're going to see in this game is he's going to play more passive, I want to, I'm going to call it an old school uh, scouting style really. Uh, pretty much the way you would usually scout before all the um, the map and game changes kind of promote more of an active scouting. So what you're going to see is he's going to start out passive and then as the game goes on get more aggressive and do a more active scouting. So he's going to E1 to the... I want to say typical passive uh, scouting spot. Usually you see scout tanks running the... Um, the E line in the middle and trying to pop up, not get shot in scout tanks. So he's holding the trigger, which is a good thing when you're passive scouting. You don't want to give away your position by firing. It requires a lot of patience. So he spotted the IS-7, his allies push onto it, and also spotted an object 268 and IS-3. And IS-3 appears to be aiming at him, and I will tell you right now, uh, Slardy does actually have six cents on uh, the T-71, so that was a very lucky guess shot, I'm assuming, because he was not lit. Now, the passive scouting on this map can be really, really good, uh, in the sense that you can get a lot of um, spotting out of it, and I do believe that was another blind shot at him, but he moved so it missed. Now, the good thing is you can spot a lot of tanks, and if you have a team that's actually helping you, you can get a lot of spotting. The bad side to it is that you can spot a lot of tanks, and usually your tank destroyers or heavy tanks, as you're going to see, are usually camping at like B1, B2, and usually don't have V range. So, I don't know exactly, but I think maybe the Fosh and the FE have V range. Or not the Fosh, the, uh, the Waffenjager. I don't think the Fosh does. I, I could be wrong. I, it's been a while since I've really played that side of the map. But I know if you're not far enough forward, you will not be able to shoot anything, even if it's lit. Unless you're blind firing and getting lucky. Um, so the Bulldog's kind of yellowing forward for some reason. And dying, as you might expect. Slardy did not get lit. So he's just kind of waiting, hoping his teammates can shoot the uh, the tanks he's laying. The problem now is that the whole fear factor is happening. They get spotted by the bulldog, assume everything can shoot them, and so they're backing further away towards allied arty. And as you can tell, the enemy team can't see them because they're out of view range, even though they're lit. So there's really no chance of them getting shot at all. They're just backing away for no reason. Um, the only thing that can really shoot them is arty. But uh, clearly it hasn't happened because the Waffle Dragon isn't dead. Um, so there's that. Already pushed onto the KV-4, which is kind of unusual. Uh, probably would be better to focus the hull down IS-7, but it's already they're going to shoot the low tier trying to get damage, even though it didn't really didn't get any damage out of it. Um, I think the other already did, however, shoot the IS-7, which is good. So... This is the point of passive scouting, which can get really boring. The point where you're spotting something, but your teammates have no shots on them, because they're not the brightest, and they don't realize there's a thing called view range on top of, you know, vision. So, luckily, the FV and I think the Fosh managed to kill the KV-4. But now, uh, the enemy team has realized they're getting spotted. So they're cowering behind the little, um... There's a little ridge back there, which leads to low ground. So they're all huddled in that corner, presumably. Um, he manages to spot the object. However, again, I don't think anything can... Oh, wow. Well, maybe maybe I was mistaken. Maybe they can't shoot it. Uh, the problem now is that they are getting really close to Slardy. And they're, they're firing their guns. So if they get behind him, he could potentially get shot even though he's not lit. Uh, however, I 
do think, yeah, they're lower down at the helm, so should be fine. Uh, they are 7 0 up at this point, so now you're gonna actually see him play a bit more active. He's gonna move forward a little bit, get into another bush, and then play a bit uh, passive. But the problem here is that, yes, he's further forward, but he's in lower ground now, so he doesn't have better vision, really. Because uh, they're in, they're behind a ridge back there. So by him going to lower ground, he's not, spot, uh, not really spotting anything. He got Lake Crossing, which means that they have a tank destroyer back there, camping, as you would presume. So he's gonna, he's in the little ditch here, waiting to break vision, and then he's gonna go. And this is kind of, kind of risky because he's already been lit. Although I'm assuming it was when he actually crossed the road, and most of the tanks back there can one shot him or really mess him up. Um, luckily for him, the object 268 is kind of crap. So, there's that. And by crap, I mean it has a high alpha gun, but can't turn the gun for really anything in the accuracy. It is not the best. As you're going to see uh, again. So, he's lit again. I have 7 shot and missed, luckily. And, uh, presumably he got the spot for that. Considering he was closest to it and, uh, it fired him. The T-54 may have actually got a spotting for ice three. I do not know. I'll have to check in the after battle as well. But uh, he's now taking a more active approach. He has zero damage so far, no kills. And I'm assuming quite a bit of spotting. And he's playing a really aggressive. Object 263 over there. Uh, could potentially one-shot him as well. So he has to be mindful of that. And already shooting at a uh, scout tank on a reverse slope, always a very wise choice. And uh, his team has now killed Fernand. It's just a matter of actually finishing up the last three tanks. Artie's pretty much dead. Can he get the kill? He doesn't indeed get the kill. Uh, which leaves object 263 and then nearly dead 268. And uh, 268, very accurate as we know as you're about to see again. Takes a shot at 268, and 268 has a shot on him, and uh, just puts into the ground. Great tank. So he's gonna push onto the object 263, and that is game over. And, uh, yeah. I'm assuming it's gonna be a good scouting game. He didn't get a lot of damage, but, but, it's not all about damage, really. Uh, if you can help your team put out a lot of damage, even though you're not putting out a lot of damage yourself, you're still contributing towards your team winning said game. And they did win that game pretty heavily. Just kind of one side, really. Uh, so let's see the after battle result. All right. So that was his second mark of excellence right there, which is not bad. Uh, patrol duty and scout. He uh, obviously didn't get a lot of damage, um, but he's a scout tank, and you're technically not supposed to. You're supposed to be scouting, um, although you can actually get quite a bit of damage in scouts, but that's besides the point. So uh, top experience with 1,205, which is pretty damn good, um, and it's worth pointing out here. That the tank destroyer from that platoon, which got the most damage, was the one that was actually farther forward, whereas the Waffendrager, which was the one all the way in back, got uh, got the least amount of damage there. Wonder if there's a correlation between the two. Although it is an FE, to be fair. <laughs> to be completely fair. Uh, his platoon mate didn't really have the best of games, although they're in a a tier 8 and they got spied by that bulldog pretty early so there's that um, ice 3 not bad really let's see how well he did though fired 6 shots and that was pretty much all at the end of the game uh, 2 hit 2 penetrated for 149 damage again 
at the end of the game, mainly just trying to finish, get some damage before the game is over. Um, took that one hit from the IS-3. He actually blocked damage. Wow. Oh no, he didn't block damage. He, um, wow. I am tired. Oh god. He, uh, he spotted 10 enemies. Um, damage 2, destroyed 1. Again, at the end of the game. Uh, got 10,500, uh, spotting. Which is really, really good. Um. Didn't have a premium account, or he would have made 70,000, uh, credits. He made 45,000 credits, which is still really good. And 3,615 experience on a triple. Uh, so really good result overall. Um. Showing that you can still, you know, pass the scout. Although, it's... In my opinion, you can't pass a scout as much as you used to be able to. Uh, due to the new maps being really corridor heavy. Uh, there are very... Uh, again, this is my opinion. My humble opinion here. But I feel like there is... Pretty much the only good scouting maps for like passive scouting at this point are the old maps which are still in the game and haven't been removed. Uh, again, this is just my opinion. Uh, maps like Prokhorovka. Obviously, Fiery Sailing is new, but it's based off an old map. So there's that. Uh, Malinovka. Not to say Malinovka is a good map. It's not. It's really campy. But it's good for scouting nonetheless swamp is not bad for scouting either and that's technically an old map although it's been redesigned several times uh, but y you look at the new maps it's more they they how to put it they more favor heavy tanks and medium tanks really they don't favor the scout tanks or tank destroyers for the most part uh, and I'm looking at like Pilsen, Stalingrad, Kharkov. Kharkov you can, in a way, scout, but it, it again, it. A lot of the new maps are corridors. Uh, let's be honest about it. They're really. There's not much of a role for light tanks, to be fair, uh, in my opinion. It, most of the things light tanks can do. Uh, a lot of the medium tanks in the game can do better, and they can also fight. Whereas, depending on the situation, a light tank can't really defend itself if it comes up against a tank that's actually bigger than it, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, but again, that's just my opinion. Uh, if you think otherwise, feel free to leave a comment and let me know your opinion on the matter. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, I will be doing subscriber videos again I'm not gonna do them as often as I did before mainly due to the fact that I kind of have time uh, constraints at the moment uh, and there's you know the, the matter of it being that with the way replays are in World of Tanks a lot of the time people will send me replays from older versions which I can't watch anymore because I, I used to save older version of the game however I don't anymore I only have the latest version which is 9.14.1 I want to say I think it's point one. Uh, so if you have a, a replay from 9.14 or 9.14.1 because they both work together uh, feel free to send them in and I will look at them and most likely make a video for you uh, and soon to be 9.15 because I think that's coming out soon uh, if you have a replay of anything before 9.13, because I still have 9.13 as well. I should point that out. So anything 9.12 or earlier, I cannot, I can't watch, sadly. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, I will put the email link that you can send in replays. Um, so if you want to send in a replay, uh, you can send it to that email. I also set up a Discord server. Uh, so you can also upload replays to there by just putting the link into the replay channel and I will also put that in the channel description uh, so if you want to join the discord and 
upload or not upload but put your uh, your replays there and if you want you can also chat with um, myself and a couple other people from either the live stream uh, former GSC members or other subscribers uh, feel free uh, and uh, thank you for watching <laughs>